Hey friends, thank you so much for stopping by. Today we are wet felting this cool beanie. We call it our grab and go wool felt beanie because it is designed to be super durable, scrunch up in your hat, shove it in your pocket, throw it in your backpack or even in your glove box and keep it everywhere you are when it's cold and chilly. It will make amazing gifts. It will sell well if you're selling like online or especially at craft fairs and stuff where people can try them on. We're going to show you how to make it so it fits your head and help you a little with sizing. This is the quick version of the tutorial. If you are looking for the longer Q&A that we presented live, check the description for a link. And if you're brand, brand new and you want to really take it slow, look for the link for our online school. This is going to be one of our free classes and we'll break it down for you just a little bit more. So this is our grab and go wool felt beanie. Let's jump into it. To size your hat to fit, there's a couple of ways you can go. So the first one is that you can measure your own head. We'll start by measuring around your head and you wanna measure around like this back part of your head that's a little bit bigger and wherever you like to wear the hat. Like some of my friends like to wear their hat on the very top of their head, like almost sitting on their head. But for me, I like to wear a hat over around my ears. So take your measurements around the head first and write those down. That's your hat size, fitting snug. And then you're gonna to wanna to measure across the dome of the head. And so you go about mid-ear, I can't see where her ears are, but about mid-ear around to the other mid-ear and write down that measurement. That's gonna tell you how tall to make your hat. Now these measurements show you what you want the end size hat to be. So in this case, I did the height plus a few inches for my rolled up brim. And then this is the width. So around the head, this is half of that. I like a little bit of ease. So my hat will be just a little bit bigger than around my head, maybe a, you know, a half to a size larger so that it's a little loose. Um, I don't want it to fit super tight. And then again, the length is longer. This is gonna be the finished size of the hat, but our resist is this big. And that's because we went for a 40% shrinkage to make a very durable felt. You might only be going for a 30% shrinkage, but if you want it more durable, shoot over 30%, 35 or 40%. It's gonna take a little bit more elbow grease, um, but it's worth it. Now, if you don't know how to do the shrinkage, basically you're gonna take that end size and divide by one minus the difference. So if it is, if you're going for 40% shrinkage, you would take the measurement divided by 0.6 or 60%. And you can, we have a shrinkage calculator on our website for those who are super nerdy like me and like to get into Excel, or you can also get the PDF for this. Uh, we have a kit that comes with printed instructions um, to help you just get to that shrinkage. But this is based on a 40% shrinkage. This is the uh, starting resist that we're going to begin with. Take your measurements around and across the dome at any length so that we're going to stop the wool right about here as you'll see and um, just make sure you do the difference so that you can shrink it down. Here a look at our supplies. We're starting with warm water and I have my soap in here just getting things all nice and soapy. Not sure why I brought two bars of soap but here they are. I like to wet out with a sponge and a ball brass. We're going to be rolling with a pool noodle and a closet pole using mesh and plastic as a barrier. And as always, I have two sheets of plastic. This is my standard half table layout, a sheet of plastic, the bubble wrap, my rolling towel underneath, which goes up and down, horizontal towel, and my grippy mat to keep me from sliding around on the work surface. That's just your standard shelf liner that you can get at the hardware store. That's all we need, and then here is a look at our resist. You wanna grab the kit to get the full dimensions if you don't know how to shrink this to your head size. My um, layout, I'll list in the description what that basic size is, but if you want more instruction, you might wanna grab the PDF for the kit. We are using Merino Top 19 Micron. My color is Seal. I have a two ounce bundle here, and as always, you wanna divide your wool into increments that make it easy to lay out and control your layout. So the first thing I do is just take the two ounce roll and then we're going to divide it in half. 
As soon as you divide it in half, you know you're holding one ounce and one ounce, or approximately, the close approximation. With our kit, we give you more, so you'll want to double divide it. Um, we give you enough to do uh, two, actually, if you follow the same. So divide that ounce again, and now you're holding a half ounce and a half ounce. And then from here, we go long ways. This is two quarter ounce bundles. So make little bundles of your fiber. This will help you control how much wool you're applying on each side and in each pass. It really helps regulate your usage. But also going narrow gives you the best amount of control to keep your fiber pulled off thinly and evenly. You'll see when we get to the actual layout that I like to divide it again into an eighth, but I find that's too many bumps to manage. Um, and quarter ounce bundles are easy to manage and I just break them in again in a long length when I go to do the layout. Sometimes I skip it, but I do find it's easier to get a real even layout if I go ahead and put it into little eighth ounce strips. Okay, so set them aside for side one and side two. We are going to start, so here's my eighth. See, I'm pulling it into an eighth now. We are going to start by fanning our fiber out along the outer perimeter and that is just um, a way to make sure that you get all of those edges nicely covered by doing this little fan. You'll see we're doing a little different layout on this than we did like with our Simply Striking Fireball um, and we're going to fan the edges and then do a herringbone layout. If this feels too intimidating just go ahead and do the crisscross layout on your first one and then try this after trying the herringbone maybe on a flat piece. So we're going to fan around the entire edge and notice how thin the pieces are and that we just gently overlap the one that we laid down before. You know what a third or a quarter you just want to cover every little bit and we're only sticking off about an inch or so. Fan it all the way around and just take your time. Your hands are dry so it's a little bit easier on the first layer than it is once you start getting the layers wet. And then you'll see that we're stopping the wool short of the end of the resist. So this is an open resist layout. And you'll want to make sure that when you do your measurements that you leave enough, um, you add the inches for your resist. And again, that's in the PDF or the kit instructions, which in the kit you get them all printed. <clears throat> and it just basically reminds you of these steps. Now I turn this sideways just for convenience and comfort. It's a little easier for me to do the herringbone layout that way. And I'm starting not right at the top. I'll, I'll come back and add the fiber there, but I'm just doing my first diagonal over the edge of the fibers in the first row. So you're doing about a 45 degree angle. And with the herringbone, we're just going to go at the same 45 degree angle row to row. So then um, usually you put the blunt end over on top of the fanned out end. And sometimes that's a little difficult for me, so I'll just flip it over and I've not really found much difference in the way um, the fibers lay out, um, as long as you get a good amount of coverage when you lay out each row. And you'll see that I go back here and just hit the crown so that I do have two layers of fiber across this entire resist. So take your time. We did the same herringbone layout on the cowl tutorial. Um, the cowl is a nano felt, so we do start with the silk base layer, but it's a great one to practice the herringbone layout on, and it's almost foolproof because you have the scarf underneath. Um, so here you see I'm just going back and putting that other diagonal layer right over the crown there. Okay, so fill in this whole side with the herringbone layout and you're going to use that quarter ounce and um, I think the quarter ounce, I'm not sure if I used a pinch more, but we end up using just about two ounces on this hat. I have like a tiny bit left, so two ounces should do this entire hat and mine ends up getting stretched to about a 22 inch. My hat size is about 21 and a half, but I wanted this to fit loose, you know, close and cozy, not too tight but not big and sloppy either. Now I've slowed down here for the moment just to demonstrate how I go over the side and check for the evenness. We're really putting very little fiber on this project so we don't want any holes. Feel with your hands while it's dry. Make sure there are no bare spots in these first two layers and just fill them in where you need. 
This is the time to catch holes and bare spots when the fiber is dry. It's so much easier than when it's wet. And this 19 and a half micron merino wool will felt so fast that it's hard to fill in holes once you've already started wet felting or bare spots. So take your time when it's dry. And if it feels thin, add another little bit. If it feels lumpy, make sure your towels and work surface underneath are straight first. Um, but the best thing to do is to just to practice and learn to pull off in these little increments. I think when people have the least amount of control is when they're pulling off too much wool. So go for these eighth ounce strips and see if that doesn't improve your ability to control the fiber. Now once everything is all in place, we are going to wet this layer out. Each side will have three layers of fiber, the herringbone layout and then a vertical layer. And I'll show you that also. For the wet out, I like to use my mesh. Mesh is just my go-to um, barrier when I wet out. If you don't have mesh, then wet out with a sprinkler or the ball brass and make sure it's really high so that the force doesn't disturb your fibers underneath. The mesh is a great barrier and allows me to do my favorite um, pressing method. I like to load up my sponge with warm water, load it up with soap, and press water and soap in and air out. I start in the middle so that we're pushing all the water to the perimeter. So the sponge at this point is really to apply soap and water, um, not dabbing the surface. Sometimes people see me do it and then they just dab the surface of their project. We're, I'm pressing the water and soap in and air out. So take your time here. You want the entire side to be wet and flat, especially when it's so thin. There's no reason for it to be dry. And this merino top will accept the water and the soap quite readily. Now this hat is really simple in design. The whole purpose of this hat is form and function and minimal design. You can make yours as dressy as you want, but mine is designed for an everyday. And the most important thing is to teach you how to make a simple hat that fits your head and is a really, really good piece of felt. Always peel back your mesh at this really shallow angle so that you don't pull any of your fibers up and take your time. Really, I just use the mesh now for a barrier. If you've seen past videos of me, I used to um, keep it on the project and roll with it initially. I've come to love the plastic. Some friends of mine kind of turned me on to it and I like to use, I used to use two layers of mesh, now I use two layers of plastic. So it keeps the water in a little bit, especially on a thin project, and is great for the flipping, which I always used the mesh for, but now I'm just in love with the plastic. So flip your project over, and of course we are going to wrap all of these fibers around to this side. The most important thing is a snug fit. So if you're making a project that's thicker, I still encourage you to do layers in multiple passes rather than a huge big block of dry wool and then try and wrap it over. It's going to give you better control and better binding of the two sides where you, where you wrap them around. So use the plastic to help you guide the fibers. It makes things oh so easy. And I always did this with the mesh too. So if you don't have the plastic and you have the mesh, you can do this also. It's the same method. Um, the plastic just holds all that water in for you. Okay, so get a real nice snug fit there. And then we're going to repeat on this side the very same fiber layout that we did on side one. That means we're going to fan it over the edges and then do the herringbone layout. It's always a little more challenging when your hands are wet and a little tacky from the soap. So then especially go down to your eighth ounce increments so that you really have the most control. And nothing new here. Turning it really helps me, like I said, turning it really just helps me be a little more um, uniform in the layout. But as you'll see, I'm kind of challenged with straight lines, which everyone who is close to me knows. I can't draw a straight line or hang a picture straight. And so no difference in this layout, I get a little wonky. But as long as you make sure that you have a nice even coverage as you go, that's really all that matters. 
fill it all in and then we're going to wet this side as well. It's exactly the same as side one in our first two layers. Check for all your bare spots, fill in anything that needs it. If you can see the resist underneath, then put it underneath there. If you just think you have a bare spot, then fill it in a little bit. Wet out this side. You're pretty much going to use the same amount of water. Don't be overly, um, don't press too strong on the edges. You don't want to squish the wool off of the resist and you don't want to smear the wool either so that you push it off the resist. Everything now needs to be, you need to be thinking about just keeping it on the resist. We're flipping back over to side one. There's no top and bottom in a hat really. Yeah, you have the crown and the brim, but we're flipping back over to side one and now we're going to put on our third layer. With this project, we wanted to use a very little amount of wool and that's two ounces. You're gonna get a good amount of shrinkage on this size of project and get a nice, durable, strong felt with two ounces in this size of a project. If you're not doing a double roll up brim, then you'll probably use even less. Um, and because of that, there's just enough wool to do three layers. When I do three layers or an odd number of layers, I like that odd layer to go in a different direction. So in this case, we're going to go straight up and down. The herringbone layers will pull across or around the sides plenty for us. And then the straight up and down layer will help us shrink it in length. Um, remember that the wool will shrink in the direction of its staple, which is controlled how you lay it down and also in the direction it's agitated. And agitation includes rubbing and rolling. Also throwing later, but um, in, the, in the beginning stages, it's always rubbing and rolling. So here goes the final layer, and we're just going to go up and down. Now on this layer, you don't want to wrap it around the edges. You do want to cover the entire side and go all the way up to the edges, but you don't want the wool to wrap around. Some of it might naturally just stick off the edge just because when you laid it down and it wisped out, and that's fine. We'll just grab it when we flip it back over, but we're not trying to overlap the edges at this point. It's easy for the edges of a project on the resist to get too thick because you're putting so much fiber on there. So we want this to really be even with everything else because you've already double wrapped those layers around each other. So pretty much just stay within the inside perimeter and um, make it nice and even just like you did before. It's more difficult to pat it down and feel it So you're just gonna have to do your best as you're laying it down to be even and then you'll see that I put more of the blunt end Right on the edge my rim my bottom down there is not as controlled as it could be um, Here I'm using very little water at this point Remember at any point if water is puddling on your work surface that you want to just absorb it before I flip it back over, we're going to put the design layer on. I kept it very minimal for this project. I have um, Midnight, Viscose, um, Deep Blue Sea, Bamboo, and then a couple of black, I have black Sari Silk Waist and black hankies. Because the fiber I used was Seal in the Merino top, which is like almost black, the black really didn't show up. I thought it would, and I realize now that I've used it with um, slate and it looks great on slate but the black on this doesn't show up all that great because I put it down so thin if I really wanted it to show I could have put more but I was just going for subtle design elements as I said and I didn't want any design on the brim at all if you want design on the roll-up portion of your brim then you either need to put it down first on your resist or design your hat inside out if like you only wanted it on the brim that could be a cool effect too but I didn't want any color around my face. I only wanted the dark wool. And again, this project is not about design. There are lots of design elements you can explore and play with. This project is about learning how to make a simple hat that fits and learning how to make a really good, durable piece of felt. This hat should last you for years and hold up really, really well. So I kept my design elements thin and simple. You can do whatever you want with yours. Minimal water here on the design elements, um, none if you don't need, and you can just press it into what's down below. Now notice I left something sticking off the side there. This is, we're back to side two, 
and we're going to fill this in with wool, but I'm going to leave that design element trailing off the side until I have this all filled in with wool and that wool is laying flat. So fill in this entire side so that it's nice and even. We'll wet this down and then we'll wrap that design element over and add the rest of our design embellishments. Quick wetting. Always wet and soap, wet and soap, wet and soap. And there we go. Just wrap that design element over. Now on this side we're going to use some neps and I use these just so you can see. Um, you don't really have to fuss over these things. Just drop the neps on and you don't want the neps too thick, meaning you don't want four neps stacked on top of each other because they won't felt to each other, but they will felt to the fiber underneath. They are a fine 19 micron also. They'll felt just fine. Um, this, you'll, you know, you always may lose one or two, but you can also stretch a hanky over them. And I am going to stretch a hanky over this project. Um, we did that on our wet felting a cowl project, which I'm wearing, I think, in the beginning of this video. You can see in the intro, here's the hanky. Um, but you can stretch a hanky over design elements too. And again, this doesn't show up greatly because they, it melts so closely with the back. But you can stretch it across your design for a really nice veining and webbing. And I just have to credit Jean Gauger with this. Um, she was the first person that I saw that would wet a hanky and stretch it and get that really fun veining and kind of divide your design elements underneath. And we did this also in our wet felting a cowl. It's a cowl slash head warmer, neck warmer thingy. Um, and I don't know exactly how she does it. I've never seen how she does the veining, but you can wet it and then cause it to kind of clump together while you stretch it rather than just spread out as a, as a great big web. And I'm just stretching it across. You could drop some silk fabrics down here if you wanted as well in this design, um, like the cowl. But like I said, I, I wanted mine to match just about anything I was wearing. And then just tuck all of your design elements all the way around to make sure no, no fibers or anything are sticking off the side. So now it's time to start felting. Notice we wet and soap a little bit the top of the plastic so that our hands glide across and just before you start rolling, make sure that everything is hugging the resist. So always pause and make sure to just coax everything on since you've been pressing and mashing on it. Not hard, but you still have. And then we're going to roll. So we are doing our standard rock and roll. This is a small project. The bigger it is, the further I roll. For something this small, I do the rock and roll. Roll it up in the plastic and the bubble, and then in your rolling towel. You're gonna rock and roll in increments of 25 up to 100. So you'll do this for 25, and then give it a quarter turn on its axis until you reach 100. So 25, quarter turn, 25, quarter turn, 25, quarter turn. Once you've rolled 100 times in this direction, we are going to flip it around and roll from the other side edge. This is kind of like our simply striking wet felt vessel with, you know, controlled shrinkage and planned shrinkage in that we're favoring shrinking side to side first so that it really hugs that resist. We don't want it to slip off at all. You want it to shrink up and snug those sides really well so that you don't get any seams. So we will do this on side one and side two. So you do side one, side edge, side edge, side two, side edge, side edge. And then it's time to roll the upsy downsies. You can either go crown brim, flip it over to the next side, crown brim, or you could go crown, crown, brim, brim. Either way is fine, um, but just do the side edges first. After rolling in the pool noodle a hundred times from all of those edges, if it feels like your project is snugging up against your resist, it feels like everything is in place, you can go ahead and switch, if you like, to your closet pole. I like to roll with the closet pole um, as well, the sort of the smaller that diameter, that inner rolling bar, it feels like the faster your project felt. Some people don't even use a rolling bar. Some people just roll it on itself. I personally feel like I, I like to have something to push against and keep control. So I rolled all the same 
rotations with the closet pole. The only difference is once you get to the closet pole, you can roll a little more tightly and use a little more pressure because you have less water and less air in the project. The fibers are getting closer together and we are starting to create a soft felt. I only had to roll this 100 times from each edge to reach this the soft felt stage. If you don't reach this stage after rolling 100 times from each edge, keep rolling. But to get here, what you see is the fabric is buckling the resist enough to pull it sideways. And I can handle it and touch it without it coming apart. The fibers are not coming apart. Usually when you get to this buckling stage, it's pretty good. But if you pinch and feel some of the fibers coming apart, then keep rolling. Now, we're going to continue felting. We have a soft and delicate felt. And the first thing I do is reshape the hat so that the side edges are now in the middle flat section. You don't want, if you don't want a big flat dome, then reshape it here. If the, once the project is buckling on the resist like that, the insides will probably not felt together. Just, you're just gonna peel it apart a couple of times and you're also gonna turn it inside out. So the first thing I do is reshape it and then I rub what started to form as a ridge there. It's not a seam. A seam is when it slips off and felts to itself, but it's very natural for the wool to sort of form a little ridge where it was peaked on the outside edges of the resist. Rub them out and remember to reshape your hat as you work so that you don't keep them in there. See here, that's the same shape it was on the resist and you, you, you want to avoid is keeping it in this flat phase the entire time that you roll it. Now we're going to continue felting with the same rolling action as before. The only difference is we've reshaped it and we've taken it off the resist. You gotta keep felting. Peel it, turn it inside out. Now my hat's inside out and I'm going to roll it on itself. All the directions that you rub and you roll, it's going to shrink. You'll have the most control if you roll rather than just rub at this point. So roll and pinch and squish. Right now I'm still rubbing on my bubble wrap and as the felt feels like it's starting to come together and get more dense, then I will switch to the super bubble. All I'm doing is pinching and rolling. Squish a little water out. It kind of helps you feel what's happening with the fabric. And once it feels like it's really starting to hold together and get more dense, I heat it up. We have a felt going and now we want a full which is a lot, all the shrinkage is gonna happen now. It has started to shrink already. You saw that on how it was on the resist, but not nearly where it needed to be. This is the time not to quit. It feels like you've done a lot of work. If you need to get a break and grab some tea or grab a snack before you get to this point, do. But this is like half the work right here. Maybe it's a third. A third is laying out and design. A third is the initial um, felt. And then a good third is here. All we're doing is rubbing and rolling. You want to treat it as evenly as possible, but also notice everywhere you want it to shrink. Look, when it comes to a hat, it needs to fit around the head. You could always cut the length if you just couldn't get it to shrink there, but this does take effort. This hat was shrunk 40%, not 25, not 30, not 32, not even 35. We shrunk it 40%, and that takes effort. Notice uh, rolling here that with the pool noodle, I mean, with the closet pole that I put the plastic on, that wood will grab onto your fibers and tend to give you a fuzzier surface. So use that plastic barrier when you put your fiber on the wood. It's not to protect the wood, it's to protect the, the hat from getting too fuzzy. I like pushing against that closet pole sometimes. It helps me really use my strength. And now I'm shaping the crown of the head, the dome. Really wanna get that round, so put your hand inside. All the while you're felting this, you're rubbing both sides. You're turning the hat inside and right side out and inside out. But now we wanna shape that crown. I wanted my hat to have a little bit of wrinkle and shaping on the crown. So um, I made the crown of my resist a little more broad. If you want yours to hug without any crinkle at all in it, then just make your resist a little more narrow in the dome if you really want it to you can kind of stretch it to fit your head um, and I wanted mine just to be have a little bit of character and crinkle 
And all we're doing here is rubbing and rolling and shrinking and squishing and pinching everywhere we want it to shrink. You'll see here in a minute that um, I have a little drawing of the exact size I'm going for. So if you have a hat that already fits, that can really help you know how far to keep going. Um, and it just needs to be a shape that doesn't require a stretch to fit. So here's that shape right now. This is the shape I'm going for. That's the exact fit that I wanted to get. And so I'm really, really close. All I want to do is just um, bring in that crown a little bit more and now we're just spot fulling. We're just pinching and rolling and adding agitation where we want to coax it in a little bit. And you'll notice that I don't always start right on that very edge. I might even pinch it on the innards a little bit. Along the brim, if you want a perfectly straight brim and you're not happy, well then you can trim it. Um, but also you can just tug on the brim and roll it where you want it. So. At this point, this is the final, final um, felting stage. We're just getting that little bit of shaping in. And notice we're just, I'm tugging the edge. I wasn't really fussy about the edge of my hat, the brim. You can fuss over it as much as you want. I knew I was gonna roll mine up. And so I just roll and pinch where I want it to shrink a little bit. But I really wasn't being overly meticulous about the edge because I always planned this to be a double roll up beanie which is one of my favorites. So your final pinches and rolls, and once you have your hat how you want it, just for fun, look at how it compares to what it started. Um, like I said, 40% shrinkage on this guy. We haven't cut it at all. I haven't removed any fiber. Rinse out all of the soap and water. Regular room temperature water is fine. You don't have to do hot and cold. You can do hot. Some people never put cold. Jug of water, splash of vinegar, that's about as scientific as I am. Submerge it in the vinegar for at least 15 minutes. I do it while I clean up. Squeeze all the water out. If you just hate the vinegar smell, we'll give it a final rinse, or you can even do like a same jug of water with some lavender oil in it. Unless you hate lavender, then don't use that. I only squeeze the water out with a towel. I did not spin it dry because I want to block and shape it on my head. You get a little more stretch in the project when it's still damp, so that's the time to kind of fit it and fit it and do your final shaping. I didn't use a hat block or anything. I wanted it to fit my head. If you're making these to sell, you may want to get a few hat blocks of different sizes, um, or if you're making them for a friend, if they're there, you can fit it on their head. But here, I'm just going to round the crown a little bit by just look at my hands. I'm just guiding that fiber in and coaxing it to arch a little bit more in the round. Um, so final, final shaping here. Get it just how you want it. Final squeeze, and then I'm just gonna roll up the brim and make the final shaping on my head. And that's really, the, this hat is designed to be just that, just a nice hugger of the head. You could steam press it if you want. I wanted this to be a real casual hat and I wasn't worried about that finish being overly shiny. Like I said, I'm gonna be shoving it in my pocket and I don't wanna fuss over it all year. Um, so for me, durable, basic, simple was the most important thing. But you definitely can steam press these and you can make them just as fancy as you want. And there it is, fits. Happy with that. Thank you so much, friends. I hope you had fun with this. We really hope that you'll make your own wool grab and go beanie. We look forward to seeing it. Share it in our Facebook group. Make sure you join our newsletter. And if you had fun, give us a thumbs up and subscribe so you get notified every time we upload a new video and every time we go live, which is almost every week of the year. Remember, if you need a kit for this, we have it. Check the description or you could just grab the supply list and get started. We look forward to seeing what you make. Thank you so much. Have a great day and be kind to yourselves. You really deserve it.